The podcast for the inquisitive diver. I love Lembe. Yeah. I, I think I've said it a few times now on previous episodes that my first dive experience there, I, I was actually descending down. And all I could see was sand, and I'm thinking, Matt, what the bloody hell are you doing here? There's just nothing to see. And it's only once your eyes readjust and your your focus goes to the minute level, the whole place is just alive, isn't it? Mm, Yeah. Uh, Have you had the pleasure? I have, yes. Um, And the frustration of taking the photos. (laughs) Yeah. I'm not real good with macro photography. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm not now that these things need him. I know, exactly. And I really marvel at the dive guides because, um, you know, being able to spot things that are, you know, the size of your finger now and mm. um, they just have incredible eyesight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, it's been a while since I was over there. Um, but, yeah, while we're on Lembe, um there's there's a lot of resorts within the Lembo Straits there that um, are more than welcome into all and everyone who wants to go diving. And the nice thing I like about it is that there's no secrecy. The the dive guides tend to communicate between each other, re- mm. regardless of which operation they're working for. Yeah, and they're all they're all lovely. Um, mm. They I, I know some of the resorts there have been really suffering, of course, um, yeah. in lockdown. Um, having no income, uh, mm. Salasa, you know, which was on a bit of an expansion role of having a resort in both Manado and Lembe, has now mm. having to rebuild a new res- or build a new resort on um, mm. Simone's property. Um, but they've been wonderful giving weekly updates on Facebook, video updates, Arjen and Simone. So um, because, you know, they've got lots of people booked um, that have had to postpone their bookings. So it's 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 very good that they're keeping in touch and showing people that, you know, don't worry, your credit's good with us. Like we'll be ready yeah. for you when you can come back. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's North Sulawesi is one of those um, fantastic destinations much like png where you have that beautiful mix of um you know wall diving and turtles and beautiful coral and then you know of banakan and uh banka island and then over on the other side that just incredible muck diving in Membe. Mm. and that would be one of my strongest um uh, offerings i suppose uh, or advice is that if if you're planning a trip to either Bunaken or Lembe, combine the two mm. because you fly into the same airport and then you can you can get the taxi shuttle between the two locations. You can, um, and a lot of the resorts work together. So, um, yeah. you know, and they can organise that transfer for you. Um, mm. Was it um, one of the resorts, was Eco Divers, did um, a fantastic package that took you basically around the top so diving Bunaken, then up to Banka, and then over to Lembe. And mm. um, you could dive your way around, and they just follow you with the luggage, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's a really good way to do it. Well, I, I did it with um, two fish divers because oh, um, I went to Lembe first, but a couple of my mates were, were managing the Bunaken Resort mm-hmm. um, at the time. So it was nice to – combine the two have the macro for a few days i think it was there four or five days and then another four or five days over on the island and uh, catch up with sam and elsa um and it's you know bigger stuff then with it like you say turtles dolphins at the front of the boat as you're going out mm. and lovely stuff so it's a great little package it is yeah definitely worth doing both and yeah. and then of mm. course in south sulawesi wakatobi um is oh. quite <laughs> <laughs> very yeah spectacular um luxury resort and just absolutely beautiful marine park that they've established around that um area yeah and again i've not visited wakatobi but i planned to do it um and then covid hit because sam and elsa mm-hmm. that i saw in bunaken had moved down to wakatobi and uh obviously with covid kicking in they've had to return back to 
back to their homeland. Yeah, that was on my plan for 2020 as well. And um, I even, in some, you know, one of the many webinars that we've been attending for the past two years, (laughs) um, I, I won a hotel stay in Bali. And I thought, right, okay. That's me on my way to Wakatobi. I'll spend the week in Bali here and then <laughs> <laughs> head up to Wakatobi. But, yeah, yeah alas. Mm. It is where it is, I suppose. We'll get there. We'll get there. Mm. Um, where else are we going? That's uh, Sulawesi. Um, oh, Ambon. Oh, Ambon. Have you hit Ambon yet? I have not hit Ambon, but... Um, it's It's awesome. I love it. Um, I was genuinely surprised. I did a band of sea crossing a couple of years ago and um, planned in, um, I think it was a four-day, three-night stay in Ambon in between the two trips. And I say it stayed with uh, Spice Island Divers. Big shout-out to Ronnie. Awesome fella. And his team are just absolutely fantastic. And when we look at... um, dive operations and we talk about cleanliness and hygiene and the the efficiency and all that kind of stuff all the good stuff ronnie has it nailed i've never seen such a pristine setup in my life so when you get the opportunity to go to ambon i strongly urge you to go and see ronnie and the boys at spice island divers it's beautiful seriously comfortable and the setup is just it's designed for macro hunters and photographers that the room that he's got just set aside for photography is insane. Um, uh, it, it was the the highlight of my trip, to be honest. It's definitely really good. definitely on my list, um, mm. as well as a law. Um, oh yeah, the, you know, the, yeah. The diving there is just absolutely beautiful, and um, we work with uh, Alami Alor. Yeah, beautiful little resort. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, just put, set up for divers, fantastic photography room and um, really nice cabins. And and it's really small as well. So it's, yeah. 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 It's only, I think there's, is it like maximum 15, 19 guests, something like that? I can't I think remember. think so, yeah. It's, yeah. Once it's full, that's it. That's it, yeah. And, yeah. Like a lot of the Raja Ampat um, resorts as well. I'm sure a lot. Most people dive Raja Ampat by liverboard, but there's some fantastic mm. resorts. And maybe what a lot of people don't realise is that you can actually dive Raja Ampat year round. Um, mm. There is a season, of course, which is the liverboard season. Um, you know, over November through to April, um, but the wet season doesn't affect. Um, land-based diving so Mm -hmm. there's some wonderful and and again really small boutique resorts with those beautiful overland water bungalows um, places Mm -hmm. like Raja for Divers um, they're pretty reasonable as well and they also have wet season um, specials and um, you know the diving is, is is as good year round yeah. there um the only thing that is affected in wet season is the liverboard because the seas can get quite big yeah i think that's because the majority of the, the um, liverboards that operate in um raja are the same boats that operate in komodo and they do mm. a season rotation don't they they do yeah that's why you get the band of sea crossing yeah. either end of the <laughs> season they, they cross over um, yeah. And there's lots of really interesting crossover trips between Komodo and Raja Ampats. Um, mm. I'm seeing more and more, um, you know, variations on itineraries, like, you know, cover the various islands in between. Um, yeah. And I'll give a shout out to Tambora as well for having some of the most interesting itineraries. They go everywhere from Kalimantan to um uh Chandrawasi Bay in <laughs> Raja Ampat. So they cover almost the whole Indonesian archipelago and they have some yeah. really interesting itineraries. The White Manta liverboard as well, that does lots of interesting variations around the Banda Sea crossing. 
and Mm -hmm. they're a wonderful company to work for, to work with, rather. And (laughs) (laughs) they're probably wonderful to work for as well. (laughs) Um, Pendito is a lovely boat as well that has a few interesting itineraries. They also a couple of times a year do a family trip, um, which is they're one of the very few liverboards that welcome kids on board. Um, so, you know, what better way can you introduce the next generation than, you know, diving yeah, in right to Pad and Komodo? <laughs> as long as someone looks after the kids while you can go dive in. Well, yes, <laughs> yes, there is that. I presume they have that covered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I can't, I can't remember the name. Never mind. It'll come back to me. We'll fl- we'll flick back to it later when it comes back to me. Okay. Uh, um, where to okay. next? Shall we go to Malaysia? Yes. Tell me all about Malaysia. Well, um, Malaysia is looking to open up very soon. Um, they've got mm-hmm. a very high vaccination rate, and um, so they are looking to open. The rumor has it December. So. Okay. Um, and we always thought that they were going to be on par with Australia, and that looks to be the case. Um, Malaysia, there are three main areas for diving. There is the islands and coasts of the um, east coast, um, islands like Pulau Tiaman, which are yep. um, more on the, the, the budget end of diving in terms of how much it costs to get there and the ease to get there. Um, very, very pretty wrecks around, um, sorry, reefs and a few wrecks around Tiamen. And mm-hmm. um, they will actually pick you up from Changi Airport in Singapore or Kuala Lumpur International Airport and take you to the dive resort. Um, it's quite a long drive. It's about four and a half hours and then a boat crossing to the island but mm-hmm. very convenient in that the dive resort organises it, you know, um, everything from the airport onwards. And being Malaysia, there's, you know, lots of cheap eats everywhere you go, lots of wonderful Malaysian food. Um, and then further afield on the, on the island of Borneo, Malaysian Borneo, there's, of course, Amazing diving on the islands of Lyang Lyang to the west side and Sipadan on the east side. Um, now Sipadan is one of those places that um, was made famous by uh, Jacques Cousteau yeah. and, and um, almost destroyed because of its popularity. <laughs> but yeah. um, the island is now, the diving there is very is heavily regulated mm. and it is quite amazing you know it's this atoll in the middle of the ocean um, that drops down um, hundreds of meters and there's hammerheads all sorts of sharks big schools of barracuda bump heads uh, parrotfish um, mm. lots of turtles of course because um, it's a very popular nesting ground and it's yeah just spectacular diving um, you can't stay on the island anymore of course not for many years but nearby islands like um, Mabul there's a few uh, fantastic sustainable resorts there um, scuba junkie you would probably know of Borneo yeah, I might have heard of them once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Borneo Divers is another great resort. And and then they've got that very odd resort that used to be an oil rig. I don't know whether you've ever stayed yeah, there. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, That's quite interesting. It is. I've actually stayed there. Um, sea Ventures, it's called. And um, it's, it's not luxury accommodation, <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's – It's unique, you know, and I don't know what possessed them to drag this oil rig up there and turn it into a a dive resort. But anyway, um, it's got a fantastic um, house reef Mm. underneath those pylons and uh, 
the way you get you enter this is on this huge hydraulic lift that takes you from the platform and lowers you into the water. Um, and then it's just this wonderful muck dive around the pylons, um, mm. which are numbered so you don't get lost from your one to two to three, four, you know, that kind <laughs> That's of. That's convenient. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and people actually come out from the from Marble Island to dive the Sea Ventures house reef. It's really? it's pretty good. Um, there's quite a few sort of um, artificial reefs around Marble um, mm-hmm. in their attempts to sort of reestablish um, the fringing reefs around that area. Um, this region, you know, historically has suffered from cyanide and dynamite fishing which is yeah. now legal, of course, but um, um, most of the dive resorts are contributing to um, reef regeneration around there. Um, Scuba yeah. Junkies is a fantastic example of a proactive, sustainable dive resort. They've got so many programs in place. It's, yeah. you know, everything from uh, community outreach, supporting the um, stateless uh, Bajalau community next door, um, and they do that by um, sending you next door to get stat- snacks. They don't sell them on the resort. And um, they collect their waste and, sh- and ship it back to the mainland. And they pay them to alert them when turtles are nesting so that they could take them to their hatchery rather than them going to market. And, yeah. um, you, you know, they lobby for um, the – marine reserves for against shark finning um they're the only resort i've ever come across in the world that doesn't sell seafood because it is not sustainable in that part of the world personally i don't think seafood is sustainable in any part of the world but um (laughs) um (laughs) yeah 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 so you're gonna tell you're gonna now gonna tell me that you're the uh, female version of paul watton (laughs) <laughs> without the fame and the yeah. beard and yeah <laughs> no it is a, it is a good thing you know uh, conservation is a huge part of our sport and um big high fives and hats off to those uh those operators that are putting the effort in um yeah. I, I think i'm confident and comfortable enough to say that 99.9 percent of the operators do put the effort in mm. uh, and for those that go the extra mile bravo yeah. And uh, Scuba Junkies, if you're listening in, come on the show. Tell me all about your locations. <laughs> I'd love to hear from you. Yeah. <laughs> They're great. And so, and then Lying Lying, of course, on the other side of Borneo, um, mm. is famous mainly for the um, hammerhead aggregation, um, mm. which happens around um, sort of April, May is the peak time for that. And yeah. it's, um, and there's actually, in that part of the world, so Tiamen as well as Lang Lang, they're only open for a certain um, number of months each year. Um, yeah, due to I know. Their, I've, I've yeah. been trying to plan an expedition there for a couple of years now, and it's always been booked. Yes, yeah, it's mm. very heavily booked, Lang Lang. Mm. Have you dived it yet? No, I haven't. I have seen hammerheads because um, mm. there's quite a few hammerhead aggregations around the world and ar- yes. around this part of the world. Lying Lying is not the only one, of course. Um, you can see them uh, well, in Southwest Rocks. Allow me a law. <laughs> and a law, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, the other um, amazing place to see hammerheads is Yonaguni. Now, mm. Yonaguni. What's that? Yonaguni is a very remote island in Japan. So it is the westernmost island in Japan on the um, in the Okinawa prefecture. So Okinawa is another incredible diving destination. Another one, of course, in the Pacific that has a World War II history. But it's yeah. um, it's there's. There's, it's not the wrecks you'd go to see there. Um, there are very fascinating museums um, that talk about mm-hmm. the history there, which is a fairly, not fairly, incredibly tragic um, World War II history they have there. Um, mm. But um, the diving is is just amazing. 
you know, a, a, really? on the mainland, main island rather, of Okinawa and the closer islands like the um, Karama Island um, Marine Reserve. Just mm. stunning, colourful, hard coral. Um, hard coral, soft coral, very, very pretty. And then further out, actually a two and a half hour flight from the main island is Yonaguni, which is mainly famous for an underwater monument. So this monument um, was discovered in the mid eighties by um, a local diver who runs the dive shop still there. And um, it looks like he first described it when he first found it, uh, like an underwater Machu Picchu. So, ah, yes, this rings a bell. I think I've seen it on the TV. Yeah. So, um, mm. it's, and it really, um, you know, the jury's out on whether it's man made, where it, whether it, you know, really is a um, sunken Japanese version of Atlantis or whether it's, just a ge geological formation but diving it i can tell you it looks man-made yeah. you, you know like with your science head on you think it can't possibly be because it's the stone has been dated at ten thousand years old so no more than that it's it's basically if it was man-made it would be ten thousand years older than the pyramids so wow. it's unlikely but yeah. um, but it looks man-made. I mean, there are steps leading up to this um, main stage area that are exactly um, square yeah. and um, exactly the same start size as they yeah. step up to the main stage. And two pillars that are both ex this a uh, square um, and the same size, the same height. Mm. Um, it's quite an incredible sight. There's a, there's also a rock formation that looks like a statue of a giant sea turtle. Really? Um, so, and it's one of those places in the world where the viz is always good. Like a bad day is forty meters. Yeah. So it's it's quite stunning. They have hammerheads. What's, what's, what's the water temperature like then? Um, it's. I was there in November, which is winter, mm. and it was about twenty-five. That's not bad, actually. No, it gets up. It's tropical, so it gets mm. up to about twenty-nine, thirty degrees. Um, really? But yeah, so it, it's it's pretty warm. Um, Master Liverboards, they're moving. You know the the boat that they had in Chuck Lagoon. Mm. That's now going to go down to um, Solomon's. Solomon's P and G. And then Taka is going to go up and, and take its place in Chuck Lagoon. Yes. I, I, I can't quite – their reasoning is that one boat is more suitable – they're more suitable for those markets. But I'm yeah. wondering if that is to do with the size of them. Um, well, um, that, that's probably part of it. But mm. Taka is certainly set up well for tech diving it, and CCRs, yeah, it really is, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So that's probably why, because it's it's you know Chuck's mainly a, a tech location, isn't it, or majority? Well, certainly Bikini Atoll is um, pure tech diving um, yeah. destination, and um, that's becoming more and more popular, of course. As um, mm. and it it takes up almost half the season, the truck season for the master now. So yeah, yeah. it's going to be um, interest an interesting transition to see. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening in truck though, because um, I think that's going to be another one that's not open until way past January. No, I think they've I think they've issued a state of emergency until the end of Jan at the moment. Um, well, there's the obvious ones that are open. Um, Egypt, we know, is is open to travellers that are fully vaccinated. Um, do you know of any restrictions on arrival other than the 72 hours? Of test prior no, to it. No, no. Um, okay. Similarly, the Maldives has been operating since July and with little to no um, incidents. So mm. um, that's definitely one worth 
looking at. Um, yeah. They were the first um, dive destination to open up, actually. And yeah. so they've been operating quite well. They obviously know how to manage it. And um, that one's obviously, if you're into big stuff, you mm. definitely need to look at the Maldives because they've got <laughs> – um, the good the thing about the Maldives is that there's no commercial fishing, no net fishing allowed in the entire mm. archipelago. So all the fish that you eat at the resorts and on the liverboards is line caught. And mm. um, the benefit for divers is, um, of course, just masses of fish, lots of big yeah. stuff. Um, they have the biggest aggregation of nurse sharks there um, in the central atolls. Fully do is a great mm. place to stay to see them um year round makes mm. no difference um in south in the south um atoll south area atoll there's a year round um population of whale sharks and you're pretty much guaranteed to see whale sharks staying there um yeah the, you know on the luxury side there's uh, the lux resort um and the white sands digger um, is more of a budget um, resort choice. Mm. And then up in the north, of course, there's Bar Atoll and Hanafaru Bay, which yeah. has that amazing aggregation of mantas. Yeah. And not forgetting there's the Deep South as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but that one, again, that's got quite a small window. I think that's only a couple of months a year. Mm. But that's that's also for the more experienced diver and yeah. someone who's particularly looking for, well, large toothy fellas <laughs> and lasses, yeah. uh, sharks. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's definitely. We were we were actually planned to do one, and again, COVID kicked in, so that had to get cancelled down as well. Lost a lot of expeditions over this bloody pandemic, <laughs> I tell you. Yes. <laughs> Um, um now uh, sorry go on well, i was gonna say um also in the indian ocean um thailand yeah. yes so my home from home yeah so it's obviously you know they've launched the phuket sandbox what they um the name they have for their reopening um test i suppose uh mm -hmm. which started in Phuket. It's now um, just this month expanded also to Koh Samui and um, a few other, but, uh, Fang Na Bay. Oh, Bayang, Bayang. Bayang. Yeah, so quite a few. Mm. Um, well, if you'd like a, a super duper update, um, again, coming through from Alex, nice one, big man. Um, from 1st of December, there's going to be more countries allowed to access the country. And from the 1st of November, there's going to be 10 countries that are going to be free to visit Thailand and move around once they've all done their initial arrival test rather than the sandbox. Yes. Well, and the sandbox is about to reduce from 14 – well, it just has reduced from 14 days to 7 days as well. Mm. Um, yeah. The sticking point with the sandbox was that the 7 days had to be spent in – a resort in Phuket and yeah. dive liverboards weren't included yeah. as being a part of Phuket. Um, but they, I haven't got an update as of today, but I know they are lobbying for the Similan and Surin Islands to be included mm -hmm. in the, in the sandbox so yeah. that um, those seven days can be spent on a liverboard as well or instead of, uh, a resort in Phuket. Um, beautiful diving there, of course, you'll be um, familiar with. Um, yes, both sides. Mm. <laughs> I love it. Yes, well, I've seen some amazing photo um, video footage from um, Kopi P as well as Phuket. Um, there's, there's two quite amazing things that have happened, um, not just because of lockdown, um, partly because the um, national parks shut down places, a few places along the Andaman coast, Maya Bay being mm -hmm. one of them. Um, it now has the largest aggregation of juvenile reef shark, black tip reef sharks than anywhere in Thailand. And the yeah. video footage is just incredible. It's just so wonderful to see that reef recovering. Um, and the other 
amazing thing uh, from because they've spent a lot of time in while borders were closed um, training in more sustainable practice and um, cleaning up the beach and um, bringing in um, laws against single-use plastic a lot of the resorts had already um, ditched single-use plastic a few years ago anyway um, but this and a lack of light pollution has seen a return of um, leatherback turtles nesting along Phuket yes. beaches. And that's fantastic. That they haven't been seen there in 20 years, so that's um, an incredible thing to see. And mm. um, it just makes makes your heart warm, doesn't it, to see that um, um, nations like Thailand um, can – you know, can, can really focus on sustainable tourism, um, and they really yeah. do seem to be um, putting in a great effort to become a sustainable tourism destination. Yeah, and I think I think that's one of the big things is with with this COVID, it's a good reset for everybody. Mm. So, you know, it kind of gets lost, and you know, Thailand's a a good example because there's so many people travel to the country, it gets inundated. Excuse me, <clears throat> it gets inundated with um, tourism. Mm. And tourists, the, the the sheer volume of people coming through is just insane. When you, I mean, the, the Simmerlands is a cracking example with the uh, snorkel speedboats that that come off yeah. uh, offshore daily, and it's like a cavalry charge. So, as soon as they started to close down particular beaches, just life evolved so much. It, it just revived straight away. Yeah. So this is now an opportunity to to reset those markers and and make sure that the maintenance. Um, stays as is and and doesn't you know go um go awry yeah so we're to next uh the yeah, one that we haven't Philip. spoken about yet in this part of the world um mm-hmm. the philippines yes you literally just took the words out of my mouth I <laughs> philippines <laughs> tell me what you know uh i don't know much about them opening up um Again, I mean, it's an enormous population to vaccinate. I think they're, um, you know, a long way behind us. Um, but the diving there is, oh, God, so many okay. different, so many different diving destinations there. You know, from yeah. um, the muck diving in Analau to um, the beautiful reefs in Bohol and. Moabal and um, of course Palawan and um, Tabataha, just absolutely spectacular reefs. So yeah. I'm longing to go back there. Whale sharks as well. There are a couple of um, yeah, mm-hmm. whale shark experiences yeah. that you can have there. I've not been there for a number of years now, but um, I thoroughly enjoyed. I went to uh, Malapasqua some years ago. And just doing the dives and the thresher sharks is fantastic. Aren't they Absolutely beautiful? Lovely. They're just beautiful mm. creatures. One of the last places I went to um, uh, for a dive trip before COVID hit was to Atlantis Resort in um, Dumaguete. And that is yet another fantastic biodiverse example from the Coral Triangle where you have fantastic muck diving just off uh, you know, most of the resort's house reefs and then um, a little boat ride away, just beautiful reefs and places like Apo Island, which just, which is I think one of the world's first marine reserves, Apo Island, mm. and the coral mm. there is just poor, you know, like huge, <laughs> huge. It's big, just what? <laughs> Just Whoa. absolutely beautiful turtles and mores and all sorts of you know marine life. It's it's just mm. stunning. So I think one of the advantages, you know, along with many other countries in the Coral Triangle, but the Philippines is great for hopping around the different locations, and it, they're actually quite accessible. Mm. Um, and you don't have to particularly fly anywhere to get good diving and, and still be able to move around. So. Having to yeah. lose days of diving for fly times, it's it, it, it's out the window, really. You can just get a taxi and go. That's true. Um, and, you know, while it's quite a big country, um, 
you you'd need to do a few trips to cover all of the diving destinations but for example you know you can go to Cebu and um do Mont Blanc and maybe go down um then go across to Bahor and you know do mm. the dive sites around there you can cross by ferry i think there's a couple of resorts magic resorts for example um that mm -hmm. have resorts in both Mont Blanc and um uh Bahor who can take you from one resort to the other, completely different yeah. diving experiences in each. And yeah. then Palawan as well. On um, you know, one side of the island you've got Koran and the wrecks and those amazing limestone um, islands with yeah. um, the freshwater uh, diving in Barracuda Lake. Yeah. And then on the other side you've got the um, – the dugongs and those, oh, yeah. you know, pretty little reefs that you can go island hopping around. Yeah. So, yeah, you could get a really quite diverse diving experience no matter what part of the Philippines you go to. Hey, folks, Rod, the producer here. Don't forget, if you're looking to plan your next dive adventure, why not get in touch with Deb via the Dive Planet website and use the reference code ScubaGoat1020 to receive a 5% discount on international travel or a $100 travel voucher towards your next dive trip. Terms and conditions apply. That code, once again, ScubaGoat1020. Now, back to the show. One of the things that's really cool that you can do in um, Dumaguete, either at Atlantis or Atmosphere Resort, is you can do a paddy frogfish um, cert certification. Because <laughs> they've got so many different. Well, do you have to dress up like a frogfish and go for a dive? <laughs> they have so many different varieties there that, um, yeah. yeah, you can do a little marine biology course, which is pretty cool. So it's literally a, it's a, a fish ID on specifically on frogfish. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Okay. <laughs> Novel? Yeah. Galapagos. Oh, my God, um, I was about to say yeah, that too. Yeah. And it's open. See, it is, it is. On arrival, you need to present a negative uh, PCR test uh, within 72 hours of uh, the travel or a vaccination card issued within 14 days prior to arrival. Uh, they complete the series of the specified COVID-19 vaccine. So it's not too restrictive, and I would assume that that all goes for when you land internationally in Ecuador. Um don't know what it's like actually when you arrive on San Cristobal if you've got to show proof again. Um, but you can't actually get to San Cristobal unless you go through Ecuador. So no, I'd, I'd say that it shouldn't be too base. much of a hassle. So it yeah. um, shouldn't be too much of a hassle. Um, I've yeah. yet to be to dive the Galapagos, and um, <laughs> unfortunately, there's no more Darwin's Arch, which. No, is no, but we now have the. The, 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 twin the, towers? the Darwin pillars. The Darwin pillars. Yeah. 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 So that's quite an amazing event to happen, you know, when nobody. Well, there was an aggressor live aboard there when it happened, I think. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've got uh, I've got a trip going in 2023 with a couple of spaces left on it. Okay. Well, <laughs> 2023 might be my year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's it's um it's remarkable. I mean, it's a. Uh, it's a completely different style of diving, particularly when you're looking at Darwin's Arch and and uh, Wolf. Um, you know, there's a relatively good current running through, so it's not recommended for for noobs. Mm. Um, and you need to be comfortable. In all seriousness, you need to be comfortable with current yeah. before going there. Otherwise, you're going to spend a couple of days sat on the boat. It's as simple as that. You're just not want going to want to get in the water. Yeah. Um, but from the from the dinghy, it's literally a a backwards roll entry and you shoot straight down to five to eight meters and um, it's all lava rock. So you can hide behind the lava rock and then make your way down to a bit of depth. And then you just sit and enjoy the show as mm. what seems like the world's quantity of hammerheads are, are passing yes. you by. It's fantastic. Yeah, definitely one. Oh yeah. To, oh yeah. To it's, tick off. it's, it's a, it's a beautiful place to dive. Um, and surprisingly, it wasn't too chilly. I think for eighty percent of my dives, all I was wearing was my shark skin and uh, some tech shorts and a, a three mil rashi over the shark skin, over yeah. the hood. Uh, 
Um, but the twenty percent of the dives that I did have to jump into a five mil, so it's, it's not too bad. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. But I'm warm blooded anyway. <laughs> the missus, on the other hand, she was in a seven mil plus another seven mil, and God knows what. Else. Yeah, I'd be in a seven <laughs> mil. <laughs> There's a quick shout out to French Polynesia. Oh yeah. Um, that's um, known better as Tahiti, even though Tahiti is only one of the islands there. But it's mm. um, they they are looking to attract more divers to French Polynesia. Um, previously, most people would dive there on the French Polynesia Master, which is no more. But there is some great diving to be had around the whole archipelago that you can do with a bit of island hopping. Um, on Maria, for example, you have um, all the wonderful rays just in the shallow bays there. And then, of course, in Fakarava and Rangaroa, just absolutely stunning, pristine reefs and the famous grouper aggregation, of course, which attracts yeah. ab- just hundreds and hundreds of reef sharks for a big feast to watch. That's um, yeah. really quite spectacular. Um, they're looking to open up very soon. So, um, for, you know, French Polynesia is definitely one worth thinking about. Also has I a, think I need to save some of my pension money. Well, for that. yeah, expensive. that's also got a reputation of being pricey. But if mm. you do it staying in guest houses, um, pension, um, it can mm-hmm. um, be a lot cheaper. There's a huge difference there between staying in a guest house and staying in a resort. Huge difference yeah. in price. And there's a wonderful yeah. dive operator there that has about um, – Oh, goodness, I think about 15 dive centres around the archipelago and who will pick up from guest houses or from resorts, but guest houses are a much cheaper option. So yeah. um, if anyone's interested in finding out more about that, um, I can help, of course. And of course. the only other place that we haven't mentioned really that is worth a mention is um, Timor-Leste. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. I keep seeing Desmond put a load of awesome stuff up. Yeah, just beautiful. And uh, really friendly dugongs just off mm-hmm. the coast. Um, the coast dives there um, near Dili. Um, they usually hang around for about at least 20 minutes. They're very curious. And, um, again, very beautiful reefs uh, on the islands just out mm. from Dili. And then – Around October to December, of course, is um, the whales, blue whales, pilot yes. whales. Um, yeah. yeah. It's one of the few, few places in the world where the blue whale comes very close to the shoreline, mm. doesn't it? You can basically sit at the bar and watch them in Delhi because yeah. <laughs> the water's yeah. very deep there. Um, and, yeah. yeah, you can basically just sit at the bar and just watch them go past. Mm. So that's yeah. quite an incredible it was experience. it was one of the routes i was planning to again it, it'll, it'll come back <laughs> it'll come back <laughs> i was planning on and do, yeah around that time of year i was going to incorporate going to timor less doing the blue whales and then flying from Dili up to ambon and doing alarmy law and spice island divers so to have like, it as a like a two-week package yeah you know? that sounds great <laughs> yeah yeah it'll come it'll come <laughs> good stuff okay um so i think we'll round it off there for now debs yeah um what's the best way for people to get in touch with you um go to diveplanet.com and that's mm-hmm. planet with an i as in plan it and yeah. um or find us on facebook instagram twitter it's we're everywhere <laughs> so yeah. or if you if you want to contact me um I have a public profile on Facebook as well, so feel free to message me um, or email me. It's just Deborah at DivePlanet.com. So, um, awesome. Well, we'll yeah. put all the links into the show notes as well. Yep. And uh, for those people that are watching this on YouTube, you might want to pop across to the podcast because we might have a cheeky little uh, promotional um, Oh, yes. Me. That's right. We do. Which we won't announce now, but we'll put it into the podcast. <laughs> All right. Well. Happy days. Thanks for joining us, Debs. Thanks for having me. It's been great chatting about, you know, all the diving I'm missing. <laughs> all, the, all the stuff that we're going to do. Yeah. Yes. 
Okay. Okay. Thanks for now. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye, bye everybody. This is Scuba Goat Under the Sea, the podcast for the inquisitive diver.